Good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. We are the prophetic royal coat of arms ministry of the Reformed Pentecostal Anglo-Saxon and Royal Empire of the Kingdom of God denomination. Our Sunday worship service is 11 a.m. Our Thursday night Bible study is 7 p.m. I am His Imperial and Royal Highness Archduke of the prophetic royal coat of arms ministry and house of hanzo and his grace duke pomerania and livonia the right reverend dr colonel robert l maxwell the prophetic group could arms ministry royal guard of pomerania and livonia field marshal of the prophetic royal kid of arms ministry and knight of the sacred and military order of merits of the prophetic royal kid of arms ministry of the house of Hanzo and Bell Scott. So, turn to Psalm 18. And today we're going to pick it up from verse 6. So, verse Six, this is out of the New Living Translation. But in my distress I cried out to the Lord. Yes, I prayed to my God for help. He heard me from his sanctuary. My cry reached his ears. Then the earth quaked, quaked and trembled. The foundations of the mountain shook. They quake they quake because of his anger smoke poured from his nostrils fierce flames leap from his mouth glowing coals flame forth from him he opened the heavens and came down dark dark storm clouds were beneath his feet mounted on a Mounted on a mighty angel, he flew soaring on the wings of the wind. He shrouded himself in darkness, veiling his approach with the scent rain clouds. The brilliance of his presence broke through the clouds, raining down hell and burning coals. So, those few verses can be, can sum up sum up the verses one through five. Whatever stress, whatever struggles you're going, whatever ups and downs you may find yourself, the dangers you may face, the persecution, your persecutions can be summed up in those few verses. When you cry out before God, He will crush the opposition in your lives, those obstacles, those struggles, those fights. He will crush them. He will rain His fire judgment and retribution upon them and crush and defeat and clear a way for you for victories after victories after victories in your life through the gifts of God the Father, through the gifts of God the Son, through the gifts of God the Holy Ghost. You crush the opposition. 
You crush your trials. You triumph over your trials, your stresses, your fights, your starvation, your hunger and addiction. If you seek after Him and pursue Him and pray for Him, pray to Him and let Him be your warrior filled marshal, your warrior king to crush the opposition in your life and give you victory after victory. Yes, you'll win some and yes, you'll lose some and yes, and yes, and yes, you'll slide, you'll backslide, you'll fall on your face. But if you keep pursuing Him through prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel, developing your relationship, God will crush your opposition in your life, your struggles, your fights, your addictions, your hungers, your oppressive governments. God shall crush the opposition in your life like the raining hammer of Thor in your life give you victory through the sanctifying, regenerating work of the Holy Ghost. You've been saved by grace, justified by faith alone in Christ you just saved under works, not meritorious works. You've been sanctified. What does sanctification mean? Set apart for God. What does you've been sanctified? What does sanctification mean? Holiness. And what does holiness mean? Set apart for God's purpose and plan. His instrument. To convert the world. And yes, even help bring about his judgments and retributions upon the pagan wicked world. You've been sanctified, you're being sanctified. And someday you will be complete, you will be glorified for all eternity, making you look more and more like Christ Jesus each and every day in your life when you walk with Him. Hallelujah. These verses we see apocalyptic language being used. And your triumphs and victories in your life will be Again, passage of scripture, David wrote the psalm when he was in big trouble by Saul. But at the same time, King David had to walk to the door of typology. which points forward to Christ and what He will do and what He will accomplish in this world through the systematic preaching and teaching of the Word of God. The world will slowly and gradually be Christianized, ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity as God uses His double-edged sword, converting His enemies to His friends, and throughout history, God continues to exercise judgment and retribution on nations and countries for their sin and disobedience and wickedness. But this, more specifically, is pointing forward to uh, the first century period of time when the when God brought his judgment upon 
Apostate House of Judah, destruction of the Temple in 70 AD, the scattering and the regathering. The same old Israel, the same old Judah, just blood washed and sanctified and transformed. history until the end when the world is completely Christianized in a golden age of peace and prosperity. Christ will return, defeat it, the last enemy, which is death, who is the devil, resurrection, and this end, the, great, the final judgment, the last judgment. Some will be resurrected to everlasting life, some to everlasting destruction. See, King David had to walk through the door of typology because the Old Testament is typology like crazy. Because Christ is the substance that fulfilled the types and shadows of the Old Testament. And the Old Testament, people had to walk through the door of typology that points forward to the substance that fulfills the types and shadows of the Old Testament. God fulfills the fulfills the ceremonial law, the moral and civil law remains, even though he did as well fulfill those, but the moral and civil law remains. And it will remain like that until resurrection day. And for all eternity, in the final earth age and heaven age, the third world age and heaven age. Verse 13, the Lord thunders from heaven, the Most High gave a mighty shout. He shot his arrows and scattered his enemies. His lightning flashed and they were greatly confused. Then at your command, O Lord, at the blast of your breath, the bottom of the sea could be seen and the foundations of the earth were laid bare. He reached down from heaven and rescued me. He drew me out of the deep waters. He delivered me from my powerful enemies, from those who hated me and were too strong for me. They attacked me at a moment when I was weakest, but the Lord upheld me. He led me to a place of safety, he rescued me. Because because he delights in me, the Lord rewarded me for doing right. He compensated me because of my innocence, for I have kept the way of the Lord. The ways of the Lord I have not turned from my God to follow evil, for all his laws are constantly before me. I have never abandoned his principles. I am blameless before God. I have kept myself from sin. The Lord rewarded me for doing right because of the innocence of my hands in his sight. To the faithful you show yourself faithful. 
to those with integrity you show integrity to the pure you show yourself pure but to the wicked you show yourself hostile <clears throat> well God being just and fair again apocalyptic language being used David's mighty victory over his enemies and God's elect or I should say God's grand ultimate elect Jesus Christ triumph and conquered over all his enemies through his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, rule and reign, and his judgment and retribution upon the wicked and the evil, and delivering God's elect and very elect out of the grips of evil and their sinful, wicked ways and rewards us for godly, holy, righteous service and living for him. As we see David communicates here and our hearts communicate now in our lives. God works, makes a way where there is no way. Greater is he that is in you, that is in the world. He protects, guides you, leads you, gives you victory after victory over your sinful, wicked ways. The devil of flesh. devil of flesh in the world <laughs> sort of battle and of course you can see them using language weapons and stuff like that for that period of time because like I said they didn't, you know There's a history of changing ties of inventing weapons that we invent throughout history. But the precepts and principles still remain. God will smite down our enemies. We're going to convert our enemies the enemies of God will become the enemies of Christ. That is how we're going to defeat the devil, the flesh, and the world in our lives. David being one of God's very elect. And God right there saving and protecting him. And David giving praise and glory to God for how God is faithful all the time and his will being achieved and conquering. And David looking forward to the day when the Messiah would come and redeem all mankind. Just like we wait for the day the world's Christianized. The golden age of peace and prosperity comes into being and then obviously the ultimate goal, the resurrection, some everlasting life and some everlasting destruction. And one might say this also points back to the first world age and heaven age. 
maybe perhaps David. six obviously sanctuary well the sanctuary is not on earth it is in heaven the sanctuary that was on earth during that time points to the real sanctuary And so we see also, we see some words used. Uh, verse 14, he shot his arrows and scattered his enemies. Well, arrows have an advantage to it. We don't realize how good of a vantage arrows had. Especially back in the age when the weapons were pretty basic. Obviously, they didn't have gunpowder and guns back then. And so, you could, an arrow worked to your advantage, you can shoot it from a distance. And so, from a distance, God will shoot his arrows and scatter your enemies in your life. Now, I don't know if David knew he was prophesying here. Heard it from somebody, probably knowing from, didn't know he's prophesying or did. Either way, he learned his, obviously, about the Messiah and all that kind of stuff from his study and uh, the Torah and all that. But the fact of the matter is prophetic. Points to the uh, judgment that fell on Jerusalem in 70 AD. Refers to the retribution that God will exercise throughout history until God's, the Great Commission is fulfilled and the resurrection takes place. And that'll be that. That'll be the end of all that mess. And of course, he rewards you with good for your good and bad deeds in the next the heavens to come, or the third, uh, second world, uh, third world age of heaven age, which nothing to do with your salvation, not efficacious to your salvation. And you can be rest assured if you. Keep yourself focused on God's will in your life. You will see God work mighty, mighty miracles in your life. And of course, one day the world will be converted. God's enemies will be his friends. Till then, keep our heads up, focusing on him. And this passage obviously is using apocalyptic language and it's not saying the world's going to be destroyed. What it's talking about is when the earth is rejuvenated. When the resurrection day has arrived.
verse 22, you rescued those who are humble, but you humiliated the proud. The proud will be reduced and the humble will be rescued. Verse 28, Lord, you have brought light to my life. My God, your light. You light up my darkness. In your strength I can crush an army with my God I can scale any wall. See with God you can do anything. Anything his will still desires to do with you. you gotta be humble. This word humble for uh, authorized King James verse 27 for thou wilt Save the afflicted people, but with wilt bring down high looks. Verse twenty eight. For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I am run through a troop, and my and by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect, the word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust him. I like that verse 30, buckler. That means a sword fighter. Buckler, a sword fighter. What do we see that? Well, God's gonna, God turns his very elect and elect and the grand ultimate elect Jesus Christ into a super soldier, a super warrior to be more exact because we're talking about the early times in history here. When noble deeds were honored God, the noble deeds that God gives to His elect and very elect, our duties to God and one another. And try here is refined, obviously. Trust and flee for refuge too. Strength, might for valor, might for valor.
back to the new living. God will turn you and I into super soldiers if we're hum- humble, receptive to God's will and purpose for your life. Because he wants to make you a man and woman of valor and his strength, his power, his redemptive work will make you a might of valor, make you a super warrior, a super soldier in your, of the army of God against the enemies and opposition to the Christian theistic worldview in your life give you triumph conquer those areas that don't line up with the Christian theistic worldview sin is going to rip you down to pieces and build you up and make you a new man a noble warrior and sister warrior of God. Well, you know, like I said, castles were very useful. Like I said, they served an advantage. But in order to take back your country from a foreigner, of course, to be in this instance a devil, uh, you got to take the castle, and God will give you the power to take that castle and put God and elevate God to His rightful throne in life and defeat the devil. Who tried to take his kingdom but didn't succeed for God his way is perfect all the Lord's promise proved true he is a shield for all who look to him for protection and that's exactly right you keep your focus on him Believe in his promises, the uh, blessings of the second, the uh, the blessings of the covenant of grace. Verse thirty-one: For who is God except the Lord? Who but our God is a solid rock? God arms me with strength. He has made me had made uh, he has made my way safe. He makes me as uh, sure-footed as a deer, leading me leading me safely along the mountain heights. He pairs me for battle. He strengthens me to draw a bow of bronze. You have given me the shield of your salvation. You, your right hand supports me. Your gentleness has made me great. You have made a wide path for my feet to keep them from slipping. I chased my enemies and caught them. I did not, I did not stop until they were conquered. I struck them down. So they could not get up. They fell beneath my feet. You have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued my enemies under my feet. You have made them turn and run. I have destroyed all who hated me. They called for help. No one came to rescue them. They cried to the Lord, but he refused to answer them. So obviously we're seeing... the grand ultimate elect who is Jesus Christ 
David, the very elect, and obviously the elect. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ did. And through his regenerating, sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost, we will turn this world upside down. We will triumph over this world. We will take back the territories of our world from the enemies, the devil, the flesh, and the world, and conquer it. Christianize it through the systematic preaching and teaching of the Word of God, ushering a golden age of peace and prosperity, and the Christian God will be worshipped on an international scale. The feet of then Christ will return, the feet of the last enemy, resurrection, some everlasting life, some everlasting destruction. And of course that points forward obviously the first century case. Oh, maybe even go all the way to first three centuries. Or further. Uh, so anyways, when that judgment happened, uh, God's elect and very elect were you know, saved from persecution of the apostate house of Judah. And obviously the Roman Empire later on. Plenty of opportunities that the apostate house of Judah had, but they just still refuse to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the one true religion, the one true God. There is no other God. Christianity is the one true religion of the world. There is no other gods. Nope, nope, not a single one. God is the way, the truth. And no one gets to heaven except through Christ Jesus alone. And so, <laughs> during the millennium, we will follow in the steps of Christ and he will achieve his objectives through us. And we give him all the glory and thanks because if it wasn't for him, we would be in that mess of a mess, defeated, conquered, no hope, but just a meaningless existence, you might add. But that's exactly what he God does. You focus on him and pay attention to him. And obviously he's given us the armor of God to do warfare against the devil of the flesh in the world. Called to fulfill the Great Commission, our duties to God, one another. God's working everything to his will and purpose. He will achieve it. He will accomplish it. He will crush his opposition. He will crush the anti-Christ, the anti-Christian theistic world's view, views in the Christian theistic worldview will be elevated for all eternity. Periods of regression, periods of obsession, periods of apostasy, Consequently, we'll lose some souls to hell, but in the end, they'll be more saved than not. And we can give God that praise and thanks because that's what you and I have to look forward to. And especially the ultimate goal, the ultimate time, the resurrection, paradise lost, become becoming paradise restored, the problem of sin and death fully and finally being resolved for all eternity. Third world age, heaven age established for all eternity. (coughs) 
He'll give you the abilities to be a great soldier, warrior of God, in the service of His cause and plan to fulfill the Great Commission to make you more and more like Christ Jesus to continue to sanctify you and then glorify you for all eternity to reward you and bless you for all eternity to reward you and bless you to your ups and downs and there's going to be tougher battles than other battles and friends don't feel bad that if you feel hopeless at times, you just turn to God, find your strength in Him. You know, we look at David, oh, he's so brave and such and such. Well, he, you know, he vacillated, he just kind of went ups and downs, he even felt defeated. Not a very easy mission for him, but he is the warrior king. And it is not easy to conquer your enemies and to reestablish, to build God's kingdom, his temple. And it's not going to be easy for you and I to conquer our enemies and to build and establish God's kingdom or better yet reestablish it for all eternity. We will go through our ups and downs. We will win. The war is not lost. We know who wins, but the battle we must go through endurance. God, you are God's soldiers. You belong to the army of God, the Navy of God, the Marine Corps of God, his imperial guards of his kingdom. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, his kingdom will be restored and restored for all eternity. Just got to uproot the enemies and the opposition and the foreigners. Who are those foreigners? Well, the unsaved, obviously. Just have, God wants you to have complete trust, allegiance in him. That he knows best. He's your field marshal, your general, your warrior king, priest, prophet. Your rock, your salvation, is giving you the armor of God. And so, he wants us to use it. And he's training and transforming us to make a great soldier. Discipline and training is God's plan for you in your life. So you can be a great warrior for God, a soldier for God's kingdom, his imperial guard etc and want you to learn from your mistakes so you can become even more skilled warrior for his empire for his empire verse 42 I grounded them as fine as dust carried by the wind, I swept them in to the gutter like dirt. You gave me victory over my accusers. You appointed me as ruler over nations. People I don't, I don't 
you know now serve me as soon as they hear of me they submit foreigners cringe before me they all lose their courage and come trembling from their stronghold the Lord lives blessed be my rock may the, the God of my salvation be exalted he is the God who pays back those who harm me he subdues the nations under me and rescues me from my enemies you hold me safe beyond the reach of my enemies you save me from violent opponents for this, O oh Lord, I will praise you among the nations. I will sing joyful to your name. You give great victory to your king. You show unfailing love to your anointed, to David and all his descendants forever. Well, obviously, we know who, who, David's talking about in this passage of scripture. Well, number one, obviously, David is a type of the real king, the real Kaiser, Jesus Christ. And all his descendants forever it's talking about the grand it's talking about god's elect and very elect and the grand ultimate elect jesus christ and when the day of judgment comes and we all stand before god it's not going to be a very pleasant day for the retrobate, the non-elect, the non-very elect, because they will bow down before God in fear. And those who are not in Christ it is not going to be a very pretty day because that's when God will pass judgment and give you the appropriate wards and punishments and into Gehenna for all eternity, hell, Hades, and death. Satan cast into the lake of fire for all eternity, but those who are in Christ it will be a glorious, wonderful day. It will be a day of celebration of victory over our enemies, feasting and enjoying the company of our Lord, our, our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, the company of Jesus Christ, all his children, God's, the six day creation and the eight day creation. Worshipping and praising God for all eternity, learning about Him, learning and exploring pain and suffering, gone for all eternity in your glorified bodies, glorified state, the rejuvenation of the world. And we should praise God for that because we know the end of the story, the beginning of the story, and even the middle of the story. And what a glorious day that shall be. And David celebrates, knows about that, worships the Messiah. Because he knows what the Messiah is going to do for him, for God's elect and very elect. And what he's going to do for you and I.
Then... So, but he wants us to have tr uh, complete trust in him. Allegiance. Our hearts focused on him. And when you're pursuing your will, you will see many victories. There'll be many defeats, many victories. But in the end, you and I know victory, God will triumph in time and space. We know we already had the victory due to the fact what Jesus Christ did for you and I. And we must give him praise and thanks because the world is not always going to look like this. It's not always going to look doomy to you. You know, the beginning of the story, we know the end of the story. Who wins and who loses? And you can stake your life on that. Because you know the life of creation, the life of conscience, and special revelation confirms that God is real. And Jesus is God. That he is the one true, that Christianity is the one true religion. One true faith. Everything else is foolishness and nonsense. So, you can stake your life on <clears throat> the facts, or you can stake your life on how you feel or the way it looks today. The hard thing to do, but God will give us peace in the midst of the storm. And remember, victory is certain. There's no ifs, buts about it. Everyone will get what's coming to them, the good, the bad, the ugly. <sighs> Jesus Christ, our Kaiser, is not fighting for castles and mud and straw huts he's fighting for you and I because we are his crown of creation he's making I don't know if you know, any of you know anything about gladiators it was during the Roman time, Roman public, Roman empire, that they used, they grabbed these people, made them slaves, trained them to be soldiers to fight each other in an arena and kill each other, and it was like a spectator sport. They watched this, people watched from the Colosseum why these people kill each other. Well, then you heard the story about Spartacus, but nonetheless, God's making you his gladiator for his empire, his country, his great republic. Gladiator, gladiator, s, uh, s, uh, s. Well, and he's fighting for a establish of the a Christian theistic imperial Christian capitalism with responsibility worldview to be established and defeat the anti. Christ, who are against the Christian theistic worldview, seeing word worldview that does not line up with the Christian theistic worldview. The devil is fighting 
and his dominions are fighting just because there is no conscience in the devil, irredeemable, evil, wicked, and all he cares about is what he cares about. You know, you see throughout history, just a European history, uh, these days you're getting a revisionist history, because those ancestries that kept conquering each other over and over and stuff are our ancestries, and some are descendants of the house of Israel, some of the house of Judah. And obviously the Gentiles played a role in six-day creation. Esau and Hagar, Greece, uh, Rome, descendants of Esau, Hagar. So anyway, throughout history, we have the Saxons, and the gladiators, bar barbarians, uh, Vikings, uh, The Dutch masters you have, England, chieftains, Irish, you see uh, Russia, you see these taking place, fighting each other over history, taking over countries and conquering and, and so forth, the history of occupation. Rome with their gods at one time when they tried to form the, form the first republic. And of course later it became an empire with these Caesars worshipped as gods and that's the period of time that Revelation takes us in. The first three centuries I prefer, I think, is the best period of time but mainly just the first century of this, because that's when the destruction of the temple, all that thing took place, and God was warning that, that you know, warning that that was going to happen. And well, you think about it, 70 years later, boom, it happened. Or less than 70 years, but you know, Christ born, and then 70 years later, destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. God brings his judgment upon the apostate house of Judah and the iron fist of Rome crushes the Jews, scatters them. And later on, God punishes Rome for their cruel, wicked, sinful, evil ways and their brutality, brute force, ignorance and stupidity. And of course Christians get persecuted by Rome, God punishes them. And Rome becomes a Christian empire under Constantine. Uh, you get a lot of revisionist history these days, especially when it comes to the Celts and uh, the Druids. As we know, Druids are the were descendants from uh, the house of Judah. of Israel too as well. But nonetheless, 
So we see European history, obviously. And, you know, what people always look at for all that period of time, like, well, there's no Christianity flourishing, you know, um, the Roman, the Roman Empire, the Catholic Church, such and such and such and such. Of course, you have the Easterns and you got the other branches of Christianity too as well that went in different directions, but no, Christianity flourished. And then, I think the real things really begin to change when the Reformation took place. Luther, the Reformers, the Puritans, the Pilgrims. Humble, you know, humble priests probably kept the good word going on. Because a lot of these empire, a lot of these kingdoms, these monarchs, really did not uh, integrate in places they conquered. You know. And so you got these occupying, occupying king. And his knights and whatever are building these castles and occupying, and the king got to be protected all the time. Because people generally don't like when you come over, take over your country, and impose, impose their brand or whatever. So they'd build castles and to protect themselves from being overthrown of course throughout history castles have been taken defeated rechanged rebuilt and we see the house of israel the house of judah our ancestries europeans russians all that kind of stuff going on taking place god building it slowly and gradually establishing his empire for all eternity and one, it's time for Christ's return. Defeats the last enemy, the resurrection. That will be a glorious and victorious day for God's elect, but not a very victorious day for those who are not God's elect. The reprobate. So we launch all playing a role to convert the kingdoms over this kingdoms of this world over to Christ. And we don't don't misunderstand me, we're gonna be victorious. And we're on a gospel of conquest to fulfill the Great Commission to reach people with the lost. That's period. We got to do it. And the life creation, the life constant, special revelation confirms the truth of God's word, that he is real, that he is true, that he is right, he is just, he is holy. And there's only one God. One way to heaven and that is through Jesus Christ alone my dear brothers and sisters what does we've been saved by grace justified by faith alone saved unto works not meritorious work what is grace unmerit favor what is justification God declaring you in total right standing before God What well, is faith, complete trust, and belief in God? Believing in the facts and all the disciplines of science confirm his truth that he is real. This is the word of God. And so, who are you going to trust? 
And plus he's miracle worker, working miracles and using the gifts through us to bring about the transformation and conversion of this world we are called and for us to become more and more like Christ Jesus every day. We keep focused on Him, His truth, the Word of God. He is the one that will and has accomplished it. Who do you want to put your faith in? Religions that don't have any scientific evidence to back up? The philosophical naturalists, the Darwinian evolutionists who don't have evidence to back up their belief, even though they say they do, and they try to do everything in the power to suppress the truth, because if they introduce intelligent design, then that means, oh my God. God is real, and I'm accountable to him. I can't have that happen. No, no, because I'm going to live the way I like to live. And you'll, you'll get, you're going to have to resist the urge to do that, and God will help you. You're going to put your faith in a religion that tells you in order for you to get saved, you have to earn it. When Christ, the religion where he jumps down there with you and picks you up, all the religions you must earn it, Islam, a theistic worldview, and various other religions, fables and cults and Thank gods like Thor and the history of all that nonsense. There seems to be a change in the culture these days. Seeing more and more movies that are in favor of the pagan gods of the old days and that Christianity is the enemy. And they give you a real bleak history of Europe, but the history of Europe is very fascinating, and Christians indeed. You could be a Christian belong to the Roman Catholic Church. And there's never been, contrary to popular belief, there's never been a united type of Catholic Church. One denomination like they would like you to think. No, there's all kinds of different branches in the Catholic Church. You got some more leaning towards the liberal ideas, and then you got people who are in Africa who are Catholic or Anglican that lead more to what the Bible, the, the, the uh, b uh, believing the whole Word of God as truth. And others who want to move more towards the liberal approach. Same with the Scottish Church as well. And I love the Scottish Church. Their, their traditions and so forth. Their reformers, brilliant, intelligent men like Knox, John Knox, Calvin, Jonathan Edwards, Martin Luther, I like the Anglican Church, but they've slipped far, far from what they used to believe. I like the Methodist Church, I like Protestant churches. I like those churches, but they've slipped far, far from what their ancestors taught and the people who brought those, founded those churches. 
And my friends, we got to change the tie on that. Because there's only one God, one church. And so, yeah, sure, there's various different traditions and so forth. But all Christians agree on, agree on the Christian, uh, agree on the essential doctrines of the Christian faith, and then there's secondary issues, which we don't have to divide over. Nevertheless, in this world, we're kind of like a non-14th Amendment citizen in America. A non-14th Amendment citizen is an alien to the federal government, but a citizen of the state. We are aliens. Kingdom that our God's kingdom is not of this world. And don't get me wrong, he established his empire. And we all belong, all countries belong to one monarch, one empire. And of course, that is Jesus Christ, his empire, his temple, his kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. We're aliens to uh, aliens to this world, citizens of the kingdom of God. We're earthbound right now. We're conquering. We're we're conquering nations and empires. We're establishing God's empire all the way around along with His right, God's right for all eternity. We are destroying and establishing nations and empires through the systematic preaching and teaching of the Word of God. And we should take note to some of the conquerors of the history, military, people in history, but remember, put that in the sense of uh, metaphorically speaking, but our job is to convert people. So, you know, we're making some changes in this world, we're turning this world upside down. Look at what happened in the first century in the span of a few centuries, a band of seemingly un insignificant group of Christians managed to turn upside down the Roman, Roman world, and we're going to turn upside down this world and have been turning this world upside down. But again, remember, we all belong to his empire. As you will, maybe, a, or you might say, a constitutional monarch, which is the empire of God, the empire of the heavens and the earth and God. It's a constitutional monarch in that sense. And all the countries of the world belong to this empire. Some refuse to recognize and accept their true emperor, which is Jesus Christ. But again, we're talking in the spiritual sense. It's not going to be the type of, but the empire we're talking about, it's not the type of empire that the Jews had in the first century. The restoration of the, you know, the kingdom of David back in the Old Testament with the temple and all that kind of stuff. Well, we're talking about something greater and mightier than that. And it is 
compatible. Compatible. To all governments in the world. Except obviously the anti Christian theistic worldview that <clears throat> has polluted our minds and our society with its mess, and it's like they're in some ways turning back the clock. And well, throughout history, there's going to be periods of apostasy. Periods of regression, periods of recession, consequently they'll lose some souls, but in the end they'll be more saved than not. It is a spiritual redemptive empire. And we all belong to it. Some refuse to acknowledge it and some do. We get to choose or choose otherwise. You got a free, you got a choice to choose or choose otherwise. But anything that's not compatible with a Christian theistic worldview cannot work and shall not work. And ideas have consequences and we see that throughout history. And another, I don't know, Four years from now, maybe even a seven years now, we'll look back and see, boy, those people were, couldn't believe that. Just like we look at some of the appalling things that people did and, uh, government did to people in America, slavery, etc., etc. So you function in God, you're a citizen of the Empire of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven and the earth, his empire, his temple, his church, and you're alien to the world. And you function in the realm and precepts and principles of common law. Not the statue, not the <clears throat> statutory realm of the earth. You are, you function in the realm, your citizenship is in common law. You're you're a citizen of God's empire based on common law, the precepts and principles you operate in that jurisdiction. You are a foreigner to the world, an alien to the world, and a citizen of God's empire. Your empire, your kingdom, God's hereditary hereditary system hereditary system there is you're not a sovereign citizen God is your sovereign Without God's sovereignty, you cannot have your sovereignty. To give, you cannot, without God's sovereignty, you cannot exercise your sovereign citizenship in the empire of heaven. God's the empire of God and the empire of heaven. 
without Christ's death or resurrection, but choose to choose otherwise. To sin or not to sin, God gives you that power to exercise your sovereignty, but He is your sovereign. He is your emperor. He is your priest. He is your prophet. He is your king. You must love him, and if you love him, well, my friend, there's nothing that you can't do with God. Without God, you're a mess. <clears throat> belong to God's aristocracy, belong to his hereditary system. You belong to his empire, his constitutional monarch. His spirit's a redemptive kingdom. You are a citizen of his empire and an alien to this world. Our empire is not of this world. You function in the realm of common law, not statutory law of the world. And we must maintain these precepts and principles. And the only way we can maintain that is through our walk with the Lord. My friends, trust the facts. Don't put your faith in fables and nonsense or your feelings or whatever. Always turn to God for help. Don't forget to confess your sins daily to God and one another. Don't forget to seek His counsel and advice. So He can give you your marching orders. Your royalty, but not of this world, you're not. And don't forget that. And if you think so, God's gonna have to inflate your ego a little bit. So, <clears throat> so let me break that in real simple terms, my friends. How are we going to establish God's empire? Fulfill the Great Commission? Well, we do that by establishing a Christian theistic worldview worldwide. And do everything in our power to minimize a non-Christian theistic worldview, which is an anti-Christ, anti-Christian theistic worldview. A false Christ, two kingdoms, the kingdom of the devil or the kingdom of God. Which one are you in Adam or are you in Christ? Which one do you belong to? I suggest if you haven't received Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you do so today. It is the grace of God that you're still alive and you haven't uh, dropped dead yesterday. Establishing the economy of God, an economy based on a Christian, theistic, imperial, Christian capitalism with responsibility worldview worldwide. That's how we're gonna restore God's empire and take back our country back from those poor, uh, foreign occupying powers, the devil, the flesh, and the world. His demonic entities, the devil.
and the devil's brutality has no mercy. He'll attack and he'll fight and put you in when you're most vulnerable. He'll put your faith in him, trust in him, believe the facts. Surrender completely to him. Give God your obedience, your loyalty, your faithfulness, your service, your love, so on. And to conquer those things in your life that is anti Christian theistic worldview or non Christian theistic worldview and God's your strength and your power to achieve that and He's given you the armor of God. So dear friends, grab your sword, the word of God, your shield, your helmet, so on and do battle. Kind of like to put it this way, you're a citizen of God's empire, His church, you're His elect. And you function in the realm, precepts and principles of common law you're not a statutory citizen which would mean a citizen of this world If you're in Adam, you're a city, you are a statutory citizen. If you're in Christ, you're a citizen of his empire in the jurisdiction and realm of common law, not a statutory citizen. You are a citizen of the empire of God and alien to the world because you belong to a spiritual redemptive kingdom. Just like Jesus Christ said to the Roman, I, my kingdom is not of this world. It is a spiritual redemptive kingdom which Christ was conveying to to the people that were his persecutors that put him to death on the cross. 